welcome to lecture series on advanced geotechnical engineering and we are in module 4 uh, stress strain relationship and the shear strength of soils and we have discussed in uh, length about uh, uh, the, the following topics like uh, you know introduced ourselves with the stress state and uh, Mohr circle uh, analysis and then we have uh, defined pole and then we introduce ourselves to principal stress space and the stress paths in PQ space. Then we have discussed about uh, Mohr coulomb failure criteria and its limitations and then different uh, stress strain behaviors and then uh, you know under isotropic compression cases and uh, definitions of the failure and interlocking concept and then we introduced ourselves to triaxial behavior and stress state and particularly in reference with uh, you know unconfined compression test and consolidated undrained triaxial test consolidated consolidated undrained triaxial test and consolidated drain triaxial test and other special tests uh, we have not much covered on the special tests uh, and then we also discussed about the drainage conditions uh, in this particular lecture uh, we will be you know trying to concentrate on octahedral plane and octahedral uh, you know stresses and interpretation of the elastic modulus from the triaxial test. So in the lecture uh, uh, in this lecture we are going to discuss about the octahedral plane and elastic modulus from uh, triaxial test. Uh, we all know that uh, you know the failure criteria actually which are uh, used in uh, soil mechanics were actually deduced from uh, um, advanced materials uh, mechanics of materials uh, especially uh, the comprehensive failure conditions or yield criteria are first developed for metals, rocks and concrete. So this comprehensive failure conditions or yield criteria uh, basically they are developed for uh, uh, you know metals, rocks and concrete. Now let us consider the application of this yield uh, criteria to soil and determine the yield surfaces on the principal stress space. Uh, Von Mises uh, 1913 proposed a simple yield function and which is given as f is equal to sigma 1 dash minus sigma 2 dash whole square plus sigma 2 dash minus sigma 3 dash whole square plus sigma 3 dash minus sigma 1 dash whole square minus 2 y square uh, is equal to 0. So if you uh, if we name this number this equation as 1 and uh, you know this was actually proposed by von Mises in 1913 and uh, you know proposed uh, basically a simple yield function and that yield function is f is given by uh, sigma 1 dash minus sigma 2 dash whole square plus sigma 2 dash minus sigma 3 dash whole square plus sigma 3 dash minus sigma 1 dash whole square minus 2 y square is equal to 0 where y is nothing but the yield stress obtained in axial tension. However, the octahedral shear stress can be given by the relationship which is actually given below which is tau octahedral is equal to 1 by 3 square root of sigma 1 minus sigma 1 dash minus sigma 2 dash whole square plus sigma 2 dash minus sigma 3 dash whole square plus sigma 3 dash minus sigma 1 sigma 1 dash whole square. So tau octahedral is equal to 1 by 3 square root of sigma 1 dash minus sigma 2 dash whole square plus sigma 2 dash minus sigma 3 dash whole square plus sigma 3 dash minus sigma 1 dash whole square. Now what we do is that if we square this one then you know we get tau octahedral square is equal to 1 by 3 square is equal to uh, you know sigma 1 dash minus sigma 2 dash whole square plus sigma 2 dash minus sigma 3 dash whole square plus sigma 3 dash minus sigma 1 dash whole square. Now if we substitute this in equation 1 uh, what we get is that 3 square uh, into tau octahedral square is equal to 2 y square. Uh, that means that this term will come outside this term will come out outside and this term will become uh, octahedral square uh, into 3 square okay. Then with this what will happen is that 3 square into tau octahedral square is equal to 2 y square and uh, the tau octahedral can be given by square root of 2 by 3 into yield stress that is tau octahedral can be given by square root of 2 divided by 3 into yield stress. This means that what is the physical significance of this is that the failure will take place when the octahedral shear stress reaches a constant value which is equivalent to root over 2 by 3 into y. 
so where y is the yield stress in tension. So what we have tried to do is that if you uh, you know when we equate uh, when when we substituted uh, uh, you know the tau octahedral in the yield function which was given by von Moses what we have got is that tau octahedral in terms of root 2 by 3 into y and this indicates that the failure will take place when the octahedral uh, shear stress reaches a constant value which is equivalent to root over root 2 by 3 into y. Now what we do is let us plot the this on the octahedral plane where where octahedral plane is the plane on which uh, the sigma 1 plus sigma 2 uh, plus sigma 3 is equal to constant. So let us plot this on the octahedral plane where sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 is equal to constant. So this is the octahedral plane which is actually shown uh, you know the octahedral plane is obtained by passing a plane through the unit points on the principal axis. So in this particular uh, uh, slide what we see is that sigma 1 and sigma 2, sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 and uh, this is the hydrostatic axis where sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 is equal to sigma 3. So this is the hydrostatic axis and uh, the line joining these points which are actually this, this particular plane is called as octahedral plane. So the octahedral plane is obtained by passing a plane through the unit points on the principal axis and the principal axis are nothing but sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 and hydrostatic axis is nothing but sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 is equal to sigma 3 which actually passes from the origin to the from the center point which actually erupted out which is shown in the octahedral plane here. So octahedral plane is very near to the soil failure state so very useful basically to uh, derive failure theories of soil. So why octahedral plane has been adopted is that octahedral plane was found to be very uh, you know very near to the soil failure states and so uh, you know we this is adopted to derive this uh, failure theories of soil. So we have discussed that you know these theories actually were deduced for metals uh, uh, initially and then you know these are actually extended uh, for the soils. So the octahedral plane is very near to the soil failure state and so uh, you know the is very useful to derive the failure theories of the soil. So octahedral plane has been adopted because the it represents the uh, you know close to the failure state in the soil and so this is actually used for failure theories uh, derive the failure theories in the soil. Now here uh, the yield surface in three dimensions is shown here. So here uh, with sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 and uh, for example here the diagram shows the Mohr Coulomb failure surface as an uh, uh, you know hexagonal hexagonal uh, uh, shape here and this is the bounded uh, failure surface and here all failure stresses are assumed to be in the bounding surface. So all failure surface uh, failure stresses are assumed to be on the uh, they are assumed to be on this uh, boundary surface. Uh, so this is the principal stress shape uh, showing uh, principal stresses at time of failure or yielding. So this is the principal stress space showing the principal stresses at the time of failure. So like this you know octahedral plane is normal to a space diagonal in principal stress space and there are 8 such planes. So this octahedral plane is normal to normal to the space diagonal. So you can see that when we have the sigma well versus root 2 sigma 3 this is nothing but deduced from the rhodolic plots and this is compression envelope failure and envelope in compression and this is the failure envelope in, uh, uh, in, uh, in extension envelope and this is the space diagonal through which uh, sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 is equal to sigma 3 and this plane which is the right section perpendicular to uh, perpendicular to this yeah, on this level uh, the octahedral plane is represented and uh, the normal to each of the octahedral plane has the direction of cos inverse root over 1 by root 3. So the normal to the that is the space diagonal. Uh, is inclined to the each of the uh, you know octa each octahedral plane has the direction which is actually uh, equivalent to cos inverse uh, 1 by root 3. So what we have done is that in this uh, we have actually represented the principal stress space showing the principal stresses at the time of failure or yielding. So on these uh, you know uh, uh, boundary surfaces you know all failure stresses, uh, stresses are assumed to be uh, lie on this uh, surface and this is uh, the Mohr Coulomb failure surface was shown as actually as an example and uh, uh, further 
the any state of stress consisting of three principal stresses uh, like sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 may be resolved into two component states of stress and these are called octahedral stresses one is octahedral normal stress octahedral uh, shear stress a component consisting of equal tensile stresses uh, uh, you know uh, acting on all the in all directions and a component state a component state of uh, uh, stress consisting of eight octahedral shear stresses so uh, we have uh, you know this octahedral uh, uh, you know sigma uh, sigma octahedral this is the normal stress and this is the shear stress sigma octahedral and sigma this tau octahedral. So uh, any state of stress can be represented by uh, two component states of stress one is uh, you know uh, the component consisting of equal tensile stresses tensile or compressive stresses acting in all directions and uh, the other one is that component of state of stress consist of consisting of eight octahedral shearing stresses. So the normal and shearing stresses on the octahedral plane are called as uh, you know octahedral stresses the normal and the shearing stresses on octahedral plane they are actually referred as octahedral uh, stresses and the first invariant is indicated as J1 is equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 and uh, sigma uh, octahedral is equal to sigma 1 plus uh, sigma 2 plus sigma 3 by 3 is equal to J1 by 3 and the tau octahedral is equal to 1 by 3. Uh, root square root of sigma 1 minus sigma 2 whole square plus sigma 2 minus sigma 3 whole square plus sigma 3 minus sigma 1 whole square. So sigma dash octahedral is equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 by 3 minus u and tau dash octahedral is equal to tau octahedral. So total and effective uh, octahedral shear stresses will be equal like we have got q dash is equal to q similarly here tau dash octahedral is equal to tau octahedral and sigma dash octahedral is equal to sigma 1 plus sigma t plus sigma 3 by minus u that is sigma dash octahedral is equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 by 3 minus u. Now using uh, from the uh, Mohr circle if you look into the, uh, in the earlier interpretations uh, we can write radius is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2 is equal to c plus cos phi uh, plus sigma 1 plus sigma 3 by 2 cos phi uh, uh, repeat. Uh, R is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2 is equal to C cos phi plus sigma 1 plus sigma 3 by 2 sin phi. So uh, by using this sigma 1 minus sigma 3 is equal to 2 C cos phi plus sigma 1 plus sigma 3 sin phi. Now this can be expressed in terms of uh, more generalized uh, condition more Coulomb condition of failure uh, in more generalized form can be expressed as uh, sigma 1 dash minus sigma 2 dash whole square minus 2 C cos phi plus sigma 1 dash plus sigma 2 uh, dash sin phi uh, whole square into sigma 2 minus sigma 3 whole square minus 2 C cos phi plus sigma 2 dash plus sigma 3 dash sin phi whole square into sigma 3 minus sigma 1 whole square minus 2 C cos phi plus sigma 3 dash plus sigma 1 dash sin phi whole square. Now uh, you know this particular uh, you know uh, is uh, represented uh, as uh, you know more Coulomb yield surface the point of uh, intersection of the octahedral plane and the hydrostatic axis is actually uh, is indicated by A and B, C, D, E, F, G is the Mohr Coulomb yield surface this is the Mohr Coulomb yield surface and this is the octahedral plane. So what we are seeing is uh, uh, you know when you see this in plan uh, uh, in the uh, when we have the uh, you know octahedral plane and this is the uh, Mohr Coulomb failure surface. So this uh, when it is uh, you know superimposed here Mohr Coulomb failure surface is superimposed here uh, we see like this where B, C, D, E, F, uh, G are the uh, you know vertices at the, at, the, at the points which are shown and A is the point of intersection of the octahedral and hydrostatic axis. So this is actually called as Mohr Coulomb yield surface and this is octahedral plane. Now uh, the failure surface is defined by equation uh, 2. Uh, that is basically this one is uh, uh, is a pyramid basically is a pyramid with uh, space diagonal uh, uh, which is sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 is equal to sigma 3 as axis that is the isotropic line or hydrostatic axis which is actually called as sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 is equal to sigma 3 as axis and a cross section uh, which is an irregular, uh, uh, irregular hexagon with non parallel sides of equal length. So uh, this is actually the cross section is a uh, 
is basically the equation which is the more general form of you know more coulomb condition which this equation too which is you know represents a pyramid with a space diagonal with sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 is equal to sigma 3 as axis and a cross section which is an irregular hexagon with the non parallel sides having equal length. So this is the you know this is the pi plane what is called this is pi plane and this is the sigma 3 is equal to constant plane and the stress points stress paths in the conventional triaxial tests are represented here stress paths in conventional triaxial tests are represented here and this is the failure locus this is the failure locus and this is the pipe plane and this is the Mohr coulomb failure surface which is actually shown here so so this is basically the the more general more general form of Mohr coulomb condition Mohr coulomb failure condition uh, represents a pyramid with space diagonal sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 is equal to sigma 3 as axis and a cross section which is an irregular hexagon with the non parallel sides of equal length. The projection of this irregular hexagon on the plane sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 is equal to constant that is the plane right angles to the space diagonal are R on the uh, an, or an octahedral plane. The projection of this irregular hexagon on the plane sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 is equal to constant that is on the plane at right angles to the space diagonal or an octahedral plane. When yield surface defined by equation 2 is plotted on the octahedral plane it will appear as an irregular hexagon in section with the non parallel sides of equal length that we have discussed. But point A is the point of intersection of the hydrostatic axis with the octahedral plane where point A is the point of intersection of the hydrostatic axis with the octahedral plane thus the yield surface will be hexagonal cylinder coaxial with the isotropic stress line. So because of this the yield surface will be hexagonal cylinder coaxial with the so it is like an hexagonal cylinder coaxial with the isotropic stress line. So the isotropic stress line passes through the center of the hexagon where you know that is it is coaxial with the isotropic stress. See octahedral plane which is the one which is actually we one masses according to one masses yield function if you look into it and this yield function when we define this one when this simple yield function which can be expressed as the f is equal to sigma 1 dash minus sigma 2 whole square plus sigma 3 minus sigma 2 minus sigma 3 sigma 2 dash minus sigma 3 dash whole square plus sigma 3 dash minus sigma 1 dash whole square is minus 2 y square is equal to 0 as we have done here. So this circle which is actually indicates the one versus yield surface and the radius is nothing but the tau octahedral that is nothing but root over root 2 by 3 into y and y is the yield stress. So the one versus you know yield stresses is something like a cylinder circular cylinder having you know diameter which is equivalent to 2 root 2 by 3 into sigma y or yield stress. So failure takes place when maximum shear stress on octahedral plane is equal to when maximum stress on the maximum shear stress on octahedral plane is equal to you know this root over root 2 by 3 into y. So the distance AB that is nothing but the distance AB uh, that the radial distance AB. So uh, according to uh, now one masses uh, failure surface is actually represented on the octahedral plane and uh, from the earlier discussion whatever we have we actually have determined that tau octahedral is equal to root 2 by 3 y this is nothing but this radius of this uh, one masses yield surface and uh, this is represented further in depth here as uh, this is the uh, octahedral plane and uh, this is the one masses yield surface and uh, AB is nothing but root over root 2 by 3 into y and this is the hydrostatic axis sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 is equal to sigma 3 and uh, so this uh, one versus uh, uh, failure surface is uh, uh, you know is you can see like a circular cylinder uh, having with coaxial with uh, you know hydrostatic axis the this cylinder is actually uh, the the diameter is uh, the radius is equivalent to ab here where ab is equal to tau octahedral is equal to root root over root 2 by 3 into y and note that the locus is unaffected by the value of the uh, sigma uh, octahedral so that means that 
various values of sigma octahedral will generate circular cylinders coaxial with the hydrostatic axis which is a yield surface. So uh, we can see that the locus is not getting affected by the values of uh, sigma octahedral that means that the uh, values of sigma octahedral will generate a circular cylinders coaxial with the hydrostatic uh, axis which is a yield surface. So a various values of sigma octahedral will generate a circular uh, you know a cylinder coaxial with the hydrostatic axis. The discussion which we continue further uh, yield surface is a circle 1 minus yield surface is a circle and radius is equivalent to uh, tau octahedral which is nothing but uh, root 2 by 3 into sigma y and distance OA is the octahedral uh, uh, OA is the octahedral normal stress OA is the octahedral normal stress and uh, locus is actually not affected by the uh, values of uh, sigma dash octahedral then you have uh, you know the different different values you actually have different uh, cylinders coaxial with the uh, you know the uh, hydrostatic axis. So various values of sigma dash uh, octahedral will generate a circular yield surface which is coaxial with hydrostatic axis and sigma dash uh, octahedral is equal to sigma 1 dash plus sigma sigma 1 dash plus sigma 2 dash plus sigma 3 dash by 3 uh, and uh, OB is equal to OB is equal to sigma dash octahedral square plus uh, tau dash octahedral square uh, whole square. So uh, the uh, the OB is nothing but uh, which is uh, distance which is shown here with the division which is shown here which is nothing but sigma dash octahedral square uh, that is OA square uh, plus uh, AB square AB square is nothing but this uh, radius which is nothing but root 2 by 3 into y. So this is OB is given by this root over sigma dash octahedral square plus tau dash octahedral square. Now the octahedral plane is also given as represented by Trusca on the Trusca yield function. So which is nothing but the Trusca criterion or Trusca function is defined as the sigma max minus sigma min sigma min is equal to 2k sigma max minus sigma minimum is equal to 2k. Uh, where, where, where factor k is defined by the case of a simple tension by Mohr circle actually shown in the slide. So this uh, indicates that the failure takes place when the difference that is maximum shear stress reaches a constant uh, critical value. When sigma x, sigma max and sigma minimum uh, you know uh, that is the maximum shear stress, maximum shear stress reaches a, a constant value which is nothing but sigma 1 minus sigma x minus sigma minimum that is nothing but sigma sigma max minus sigma minimum by 2 reaches a constant critical value. So this constant critical value that factor k is defined by the for the case of a simple tension uh, which is uh, shown here uh, for a simple tension for unconfined uh, tension which is actually shown here where sigma minimum that is k. Uh, where k is equal to this factor. So if the yield function is plotted on the octahedral plane sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 is equal to constant the lo locus will be a regular hexagon the, the locus will be a regular hexagon this, is, this equation actually represents the uh, regular hexagon equation. So the uh, Trusca yield surface on the octahedral plane is actually represented where B, C, D, E, F, uh, G uh, is uh, shown here which is very similar to Mohr Coulomb failure surface uh, but A is the uh, you know the point uh, through which uh, the uh, hydrostatic axis or uh, you know the where sigma 1 plus sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 is equal to sigma 3 is uh, ensured and uh, uh, where B, C, D, E, F and G so A represents the octahedral normal stress the point passing through the octahedral normal stress through, through A the octahedral normal stress passes and B represents the failure condition in compression um, B represents the failure condition in compression where sigma 1 value is greater than sigma 2 that is sigma 1 that is the axial stress is more than sigma 2 uh, sigma 2 is, sigma 2 is equal to sigma 3. So this is point B represents the failure condition in the compression and uh, similarly uh, point uh, E represents point E represents point E represents uh, failure conditions in extension where sigma 2 is equal to sigma 3 and sigma 3 greater than sigma 1 sigma 3 is greater than sigma 1 and point D represents uh, failure condition for uh, uh, failure and failure condition for sigma 3 greater than sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 and point G represents uh, failure condition 
where sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 uh, and, uh, and sigma 2 is greater than sigma 3 and uh, point f represents a failure condition for uh, sigma 2 greater than sigma 3 is equal to sigma 1 and point c represents point c represents failure condition for sigma 3 is equal to sigma 1 and where sigma 1 is actually greater than sigma 2. So uh, we have on this uh, Tresca yield uh, criterion which is also represented as a hexagon uh, on the octahedral plane and since locus is unaffected by the sigma dash octahedral yield surface uh, there will be uh, will be for hexagonal cylinder and here also we have uh, for different values of sigma octahedral the different uh, uh, you know coaxial uh, you know the coaxial to the hydrostatic axis we have got number of hexagonal uh, hexagonal uh, cylinders are possible so the yield surface and trusca criteria is actually shown here uh, in this zone in this zone where sigma 1 minus sigma 2 is equal to 2k where sigma 1 dash is greater than sigma 3 dash uh, greater than or equal to sigma 2 dash in this zone sigma 3 minus sigma 2 is equal to 2k where sigma 3 dash greater than or equal to sigma 1 dash greater than or equal to sigma 2 dash in this zone sigma 3 dash minus sigma 1 is equal to 2k and uh, sigma 3 dash is greater than sigma uh, greater than or equal to or sigma 2 dash greater than or equal to sigma 1 dash and similarly here in this zone that is the zone between uh, uh, in this point and then this uh, sigma 2 dash axis sigma 2 dash is equal to uh, sigma 2 dash minus sigma 1 dash is equal to 2k where sigma 2 dash uh, greater than or equal to sigma 3 dash greater than or equal to sigma 1 dash and uh, similarly what we have is that here and here where sigma 1 dash minus sigma 3 dash is equal to 2k where sigma 1 dash greater than or equal to sigma 2 dash greater than or equal to sigma 3 dash. The more Coulomb uh, one misses and Tresca uh, criteria are actually seen to coincide for the compressive test. Uh, so the, the different failure surfaces are actually shown here uh, and uh, basically here uh, we have the octahedral plane uh, and uh, the Tresca surface is actually shown here and more Coulomb failure surface is actually shown here. And, uh, the round surface that is actually uh, this is the uh, this is the uh, Tresca and this is the one Moses one Moses failure surface which is actually a cylinder circular cylinder this is the circular cylinder and uh, so if you look into this more Coulomb uh, one Moses more Coulomb failure surface yield surface and one Moses yield surface and Tresca uh, yield surface from the Tresca criteria they are seen to coincide. Uh, uh, for the compressive compressive test, however, um, the strength in the tensile test is reported to be less for the more Coulomb failure theory. So the strength in the tensile test is reported to be less for the more Coulomb failure theory. Uh, uh, here in this particular slide, uh, the Scott uh, 1963 plotted various uh, uh, you know more Coulomb envelopes. Uh, plot uh, in octahedral plane for values of uh, pi values of 30 to 40 and 50. So here uh, the uh, Scott 1963 after Young and uh, Warkentin 1975 uh, you know the various values of uh, more column envelopes have been plotted for different values of uh, friction angles for 30, 40 and 50 and these were the based on the tests on sand. The results of the tests on sand for varying uh, normal varying stress conditions obtained by uh, uh, Kirkpatrick and Kesselman are also uh, plotted here. Kirkpatrick and uh, Kesselman are also plotted here, and these uh, these points are actually were uh, reported by uh, Kirkpatrick and Kesselman. And uh, as can be noted here, uh, the more Coulomb failure envelopes plotted by Scott and uh, the measured values which are actually plotted. Uh, by the uh, are obtained by uh, Kirkpatrick and Kesselman are found to be in good agreement uh, for the values which are actually shown like pi is equal to 37 and 39 degrees and uh, uh, this is this is for the uh, pi is equal to 37 degrees and uh, and then this is for the pi is equal to 39 degrees. So after having discussed about the octahedral plane then we have actually have discussed about uh, you know the result of the uh, the you know uh, these uh, values of the uh, triaxial test or dirichlet test 
so in case of drag shear test uh, in case of direct shear test we actually get uh, uh, shear stress versus uh, shear strain variation for different normal stresses. So there also we can actually get the initial modulus and tangent modulus uh, then uh, there can be a possibility that we can also get a secant modulus uh, interpretation we can actually obtain uh, from the test data. So uh, in the initial modulus which is actually uh, uh, drawn for the initial portion of the curve uh, where the soil uh, stiffness is high and uh, then the tangent modulus uh, is actually drawn which is actually portion where which is actually shown uh, here uh, which actually represents uh, you know uh, this particular uh, value here ET in the horizontal one vertical. So uh, at certain stress level uh, we actually draw and then make uh, this uh, uh, the initial uh, tangent initial the tangent modulus. The initial tangent modulus is nothing but for the initial portion where the when the tangent is actually drawn that is actually shown as initial tangent modulus and let us say that if you are actually drawing uh, let us say at a point here and then a line which is actually joining this point and this and that it actually uh, let us say that we are having a, a strain value of 2 percent at 2 percent strain or 50 percent of actual strain then we can actually get the E50 uh, with the uh, the value the slope of that line joining uh, you know the strain of at uh, which is meeting uh, at that uh, particular deviated stress or particular normal stress for the shear stress we can actually get the uh, you know the uh, Young's modulus values and uh, uh, so with this uh, you know uh, you know in this particular slide which is actually shown uh, the initial tangent modulus and tangent modulus at certain stress level uh, computation and in, uh, in addition to that there is also a secant modulus which can actually can be interpreted. In case of triaxial test when we actually have got unconfined compression test or un unconsolidated undrained test we actually get for uh, you know the based on the in case of unconfined compression test with the sigma 3 is equal to 0 we get sigma 1 versus epsilon. So we, uh, from there we can actually interpret to some extent uh, what is the initial tangent modulus and uh, uh, secant modulus. Uh, uh, you know uh, up to a certain uh, stress level. So uh, the second modulus which is actually defined as the, that modulus which is actually defined up to that particular uh, stress level the slope of that line is actually valid. So it is very important uh, for uh, determining this uh, uh, you know these initial uh, the, the soil stiffnesses uh, correctly. Uh, suppose uh, if we are actually trying to determine uh, these uh, you know the soil stresses uh, the stiffnesses in the initial portion. Uh, then in the prevalent stresses in uh, like as we have discussed in one of the modules the physical model test when the soil stresses are very low uh, and uh, if uh, and then if, if you are actually having uh, the uh, you know with we are dealing with the higher stresses uh, higher uh, stiffness values then resulting uh, you know strains or stiffnesses will be very very low. But in reality uh, when we actually subjected to the real stress conditions the soil stiffness is low so the st the soil settlements will be very very high so uh, in this particular uh, slide we are actually uh, trying to discuss about the interpretation of the uh, initial modulus and tangent tangent modulus from the triaxial test uh, data a typical triaxial test data for a given uh, sigma 3 is actually shown here where sigma sigma 1 minus sigma 3 is the deviated stress and uh, epsilon 1 is the axial strain then we also have some uh, empirical uh, equations where EI initial modulus which is also given as KPA uh, into sigma 3 dash by PA uh, to the raise N where sigma 3 dash is equal to minor effective, minor effective principal stress and PA is the atmospheric pressure and K modulus number and uh, the N is equal to exponent determining the rate of variation of uh, you know EI with sigma 3 dash. So N basically indicates that the exponent which actually determines the rate of variation of EA with sigma 3 dash and then EA is equal to as we have given the value values of K and N for a particular soil can be found can be found by number of triaxial testings and plotting EA versus sigma 3 on the logarithmic scale and the ranges K is equal to 300 to 2000 and n is equal to 0 0.3 to 0 0.6 so the value of the k uh, ranges from 300 to 2000 and n is equal to 0 0.3 to 0 0.6 and according to Duncan and Chang uh, 1970 
uh, where uh, e, e t uh, that is uh, nothing but uh, do of sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by do e. So Duncan actually has shown that uh, e, e uh, the e value that is e t is equal to 1 minus r f into 1 minus sin phi by sigma 1 minus sigma 3 dash divided by uh, 2 c cos phi plus uh, 2 sigma 3 dash sin phi whole square uh, into k p a into uh, sigma 3 uh, by p a uh, to the raise n. So uh, if you look into this uh, uh, the Duncan and Chang actually modified the Janbu 1963 uh, empirical equation wherein uh, to this empirical equation uh, the Duncan and Chang actually have added uh, this particular term which is 1 minus r f into 1 minus sin phi by sigma 1 minus sigma 3 dash whole square uh, 1 minus r f into 1 minus sin phi by sigma 1 minus sigma 3 dash by 2 c cos phi plus 2 sigma 3 sin phi whole square. Uh, when uh, where r f is nothing but the failure ratio uh, then generally the ratio is equal to 0 0.75 to 1. So, the Duncan and Chang is actually nothing but the modification of uh, John Booth's 1963 uh, empirical equation. So for that the positions ratio can be actually obtained uh, uh, by uh, nu is equal to uh, epsilon uh, axial that is uh, minus epsilon uh, v divided by uh, 2 epsilon a and uh, where epsilon uh, 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 delta epsilon axial is nothing but increase in the axial strain and uh, delta epsilon n is nothing but uh, uh, increase in the volumetric strain which is nothing but uh, uh, epsilon delta epsilon a plus 2 delta uh, epsilon r for the axisymmetric triaxial test and delta epsilon r is nothing but the lateral strain. So with this uh, when you substitute this we get mu is equal to delta mu or uh, this symbol which is actually shown here. Uh, is equal to delta epsilon a minus uh, delta epsilon a plus 2 epsilon r by divided by uh, 2 delta epsilon a which is nothing but uh, minus delta epsilon r divided by uh, delta epsilon a. So uh, this can be also determined uh, by measuring or by pasting strain gauges when, the, when you are actually having uh, you know unconfined compression test and with that we will be able to get the Poisson's ratio of a soil. Uh, particularly with uh, with the ratio of epsilon r to epsilon a and so the uh, mu is equal to delta epsilon a minus delta epsilon v divided by 2 uh, delta epsilon a where uh, the delta epsilon uh, v is equal to delta epsilon a plus 2 delta uh, epsilon r by substituting this uh, what we have got is that uh, you know this one minus delta epsilon r by delta epsilon a. And uh, there are the typical values of Eng's modulus for granular material. Uh, particularly uh, here, we have uh, uh, you know the U.S. Uh, unified soil classification system. Uh, according to that, if you have a granular materials, which are the value typical Eng's modulus values, which are actually uh, shown for mega pascals, the values are shown in all these values are actually reported in mega pascals, where uh, GW and SW, that is well graded gravel and well graded sand. Uh, gravels and sand well graded the uh, when the loose state they actually have got 30 to 80 uh, mega pascals and the medium and dense state uh, in dense state you can see that the, the uh, e, e value is on the higher side that is 160 to 320 mega pascals. When you have uh, you know the sand which is uniform that is called poorly graded sand where uh, you actually have got uh, all uniform uh, size particles. Uh, then uh, in the loose state we actually have got only 10 to 30 mega pascals and in the dense state we actually have got 50 to 80 uh, you know mega pascals. Similarly we have uh, you know silty soil gravel and uh, silty gravel when we are actually have got a GM and a SM type of soils uh, we can see that the, uh, the Eng's modulus values typically uh, range from 7 to 12 mega pascals and the dense state or uh, you know which is actually represented as 20 to 30 mega pascal. So you can see that uh, depending upon the, the groups the types in even in, in the case of granular materials uh, you know the ranges of the uh, you know in the different uh, stress states uh, the, the, the loose medium and dense configuration. So it is a function of uh, density or the packing of the particles and with that uh, we can also uh, uh, you can see that uh, you know the how the values particularly the stiffness soil stiffness or Eng's modulus value changes uh, with the uh, 
uh, soil type, particularly we have got uh, well graded gravel or uh, poorly graded sand or uh, sandy uh, sand and gravel in silty nature or sand gravel in silty nature. Now let us consider for the uh, cohesion materials, particularly fine grain soils where you have got the silts with low uh, slight plasticity. So we have got low plastic silts uh, that is the ML type of soils. Uh, in this uh, the consistency is actually represented as very soft to medium uh, stiff to very very stiff to very hard. So in this case uh, the E values uh, range from 2.5 to 8 mega Pascals to 40 to 80 mega Pascals and uh, similarly we have uh, the silts with low plasticity uh, they vary from uh, 1.5 to 6 mega Pascals to 30 to 60 mega Pascals and uh, CL that is clay with low medium uh, clays with low medium plasticity uh, they can actually have in a very very soft state uh, the E value can be as low as 0.5 mega Pascals and uh, in hard state uh, the CL type of soil can actually have 30 to 70 uh, mega Pascals and uh, the CH the clay with high plasticity uh, CH type of soils uh, can have in very soft states very low uh, you know the Young's modulus values. Uh, and the Poisson's ratios uh, for this uh, type of soils under saturated conditions uh, definitely can range from 0 0.45 to 0 0.5 and, uh, and the clays with high plasticity uh, uh, CH will have the very soft state which actually has got 0 0.35 to 4 mega Pascals uh, to in the hard state it can actually have as high as 20 to 32 mega Pascals and organic silts uh, OL which is actually in medium uh, uh, medium consistency have 0.5 to 5 very low uh, organic clays also have actually got very low uh, you know the uh, very low uh, e values even under the medium uh, medium uh, uh, consistency. So uh, the, the in this these two slides what actually have seen the distinct uh, difference actually what, what we have for the uh, different soils where you have got uh, uh, you know the values which are actually for uh, uh, gravel soils and the very high values are uh, shown for depending upon the dense condition or uh, loose conditions where in case of uh, fine grain soils or cohesive soils where actually have got uh, uh, low values uh, when they are in the very soft to soft state and uh, the values are in the higher state for uh, higher higher uh, order for the uh, for the uh, when the same soils uh, particularly in the hard state. So in this particular lecture we try to understand about you know the octahedral plane and the octahedral shear stresses and based on that three failure criteria namely one misses and Tusca and Mohr Coulomb failure surface. So the Mohr Coulomb failure surface we have seen as a hexagon and and then uh, on the uh, you know this uh, because uh, it actually has got uh, it has got the capability of having different for different y angles we actually have got uh, the different hexagonal cylinders are possible. But in case of uh, uh, the Tresca uh, it is also indicated as uh, you know the hexagonal cylinder. So uh, but uh, we have seen for as far as the compressive in uh, the soil in compression is concerned uh, that. Uh, uh, both uh, you know, all the three Tresca and one misses and uh, uh, you know uh, and uh, more Coulomb criterion were found to coincide. But as far as uh, intention is concerned, uh, the uh, the value which is actually predicted from the uh, more Coulomb criterion was found to be on the lower side. So uh, in this particular uh, module, we have tried to understand about uh, the uh, stress strain relationships for the soil, and then we try to. Uh, discuss about uh, uh, you know different stress paths particularly we have discussed about MIT based stress paths and as well as the Cambridge based stress paths and uh, we have referenced these stress paths with reference to unconfined compression test and uh, uh, unconsolidated and drain triaxial test and consolidated and drain and consolidated drain triaxial test and then uh, in the case of uh, consolidated and drain triaxial test uh, during this year uh, we do not allow the uh, the pore water pressure to dissipate. So because of that there can be a possibility that you will be able to measure the pore water pressure. So in that case uh, when we have uh, you know normally consolidated soil or a loose sand then there is a possibility that uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the entire pore water pressure is actually positive 
uh, and the, uh, the sample undergoes uh, you know the volumetric compression. When we have got uh, very dense sand or uh, a, a very stiff clay or highly ore consolidated clay, then there is a possibility that initially it undergoes compression and thereafter with uh, increase in the axial strain, uh, there is a possibility that uh, the soil undergoes uh, a desiccation. Uh, wherein uh, you know, the riding of the soil particles on each other actually happens and uh, because of this increase in uh, volume upon the strain uh, there is uh, you know a phenomenon which is actually called uh, the negative uh, dilation phenomenon which actually results in the negative pore water pressures and uh, the relevant uh, stress paths actually were discussed. Uh, then thereafter we connected ourselves to the uh, you know the failure criteria particularly with the uh, principal stress space with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, more Coulomb uh, uh, failure, surface, failure criterion and Tresca and uh, one misses uh, we have discussed. And uh, then finally uh, in this lecture we discussed about how to interpret uh, uh, you know elastic modulus from the triaxial test data.